Hi there, this is Frank Crenshaw. A while back I did a blog where I took this uh, Airfix 109E that um, is a hack model and I painted it half with Mission Models uh, paint using the uh, recommended Mission Models uh, procedures that were with the paint that I bought at the hobby store. And I painted half of it in uh, Mission Models paint that I then with uh, the infamous and uh, highly uh, reviled future floor wax. Um, some say it's not actually a modeling product. I would disagree because I use it all the time and I'm building a model. So I, th I think I think I think it's a modeling product. Um, so I would like to talk a little bit about why I went into this process of using future in the first place. Um, first off, I'd like to say I genuinely love Mission Models paint. I think it's fantastic. I love the product. Um, I like the way it's packaged. I like the way it works. I, I like just about everything about it. The one thing that I don't like about it is how it performs. I don't, I don't find that it performs very well, actually, or it doesn't perform well for me. This uh, discussion and display will be focused around my interest, which is aircraft modeling. Armor modeling may be different, ship modeling, car, I, all, all different. I'm not going to say that I know everything and everybody should do what I say, but I will say that uh, I find the mission models process lacking for the aircraft modeler. And there's three reasons for that. First off, you have to use all this process stuff. You have to use a primer that costs eight bucks, seven twenty-five. Throw on taxes, that's close to eight dollars. Um, their primer, or their uh, poly, polyurethane additive, which is another $8.45, so that's another 9 bucks, And then one that's 10 bucks, this thinner reducer. So here I have all this stuff just, just to get out the gate. And if you don't use this stuff, when you mask, the paint pulls off. So, so, uh, so, so that's your choice. Spend 30 bucks or, or have your paint pull off. I don't like that. The other thing I don't like is I, I think it's kind of a, a, you know, kind of a complicated process. You you have to take their primer. And their primer can only be mixed with their thinner, and you have to mix it in a jar outside of your airbrush. You can't mix it in the airbrush. Um, you you, um, you know you can't uh, clean your airbrush with with any thinner you want. You have to use their thinner reducer. You know, and this, this stuff's really expensive. You know, I mean, I use Tomato Lacquer Thinner, and it's expensive. But I only use it to thin paint. I don't use it to clean my airbrush. So the whole thing kind of puts me off. Then, when I follow their process, or I thought I was following their process, I actually had paint peel. And I reported it. And I immediately was told that I didn't know what I was doing, and I was just doing it wrong. And, and then I got told I had to... Uh, do wet coats and, and keep the airbrush a certain distance from the model and I had to uh, you know I, all this stuff that, that isn't written down and even if it was written down to me it's too complicated why on earth am I paying six dollars a bottle for paint and thirty dollars for for additives when I have to jump through all these hoops to make it work and even when it works it really doesn't work all that fine you don't get the fine lines that you get with, say, Mr. Paint or uh, even Tamea. You don't you don't get the, uh, the the glossy surface like you do with with um, you know those paints. You get a, a nice satiny flat. It's very smooth and the colors are good, but now you got to gloss it because you're going to put decals on. Um, you know, it's just it's just a lot of work. And then when you got to go through this, you, you can't clean your airbrush. You got to do it a certain way, and you go. It's just all this stuff adds up, and it leads me to think that it's just high maintenance. You know, it's it's like a girl that you date, and you know she's okay, but you know she thinks she's a supermodel, and you need to put out for her. You need to you need to jump through all these hoops to make her happy. And why would you do that? I mean, she's okay, but, you know. It's not it's not the best paint I've ever used. It is one of the best acrylics I've ever used. Or, or maybe a Fiat, you know, drive 100 miles and spend two hours of maintenance. 
some people really maybe enjoy working on their Fiat. I, I just want to get in a car and drive. I, I just wanted to work. Um, so as an aircraft modeler, <coughs> excuse me, I'm just getting over a cold. As an aircraft modeler, I tend to uh, <coughs> like a glossy surface. And I ruled to be doing lots of masking because of the nature of airplanes. Um, hard masking, uh, soft masking, various masking. So it's very important to me that the paint doesn't pull up. I also paint on markings. So when I go over to Mission Models Paint and I'm basically told I don't know what I'm doing and I'm doing wrong, and you know, it, I, I understand why they're telling me this, but I have a hard time accepting it. So uh, the first model I built, I was building a Tamiya Spitfire that I had painted in uh, Mission Models Paint. And I did not follow any of these instructions, actually. I just painted the paint straight onto the plastic because I just really wasn't paying attention. And, uh, of course, the paint pulled up when I, when I painted on my markings. I went over to the Tamiya Model Magazine, and I posted that I, had, uh, I was having adhesion problems. And uh, a guy from the uh, Czech Republic um, pointed out that many people had been uh, reporting that you could add future to Mission Models paint and it would solve that problem. And that was, that was really interesting to me because uh, I had already painted my model. I didn't want to strip it and repaint it, which would have meant repriming and all that. So, uh, so I tried this little, little trick, added future at the recommended amount, which was 50-50, 50% future, 50% paint. And lo and behold, it actually worked. In fact, it didn't just work. It worked better than I had even thought it would work. It, it actually made the paint act better. Now I know that's a pretty bold statement to make, but from my perspective and in my opinion, it was, it was a heck of a thing. So what I'm gonna do today, I've stripped the model of the paint, and today I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna paint the mission model's recommended thing. I imagine if you follow their process, as long and rigorous as it is, eventually you'll come out with a model that looks pretty good and, and the paint doesn't lift. But I'm going to go a different way. I'm going to follow my own process. Um, normally when I paint I wear gloves. Today I'm not wearing gloves. And here I am fingering this model, um, you know, getting my finger oils all over it, looking at it. And uh, the reason I'm doing that is a mission model says that you need to clean the paint, the plane with, a, with an alcohol wipe to ensure adhesion. Well, I'm not cleaning it with an alcohol wipe. I'm just going to pick it up and paint it. So, let's get started. For my base coat, now, the last time I painted this, I painted it in a standard uh, Messerschmitt 109E in early war scheme, which is uh, RLM 76 with, uh, or actually RLM 70, or 65 with RLM 02 and RLM 71 um, wing um, camouflage and modeling on the side. And I, and I did it fairly successfully. I, I wasn't unhappy with it. But today we're going to do something harder. We're going to do a tropical paint job on this. And that implies painting painting uh, all the, uh, the, the tiny splotches. And this is 70 second scale. This isn't 30 second scale. <laughs> You can't hide bad paint at 72nd scale. If your paint can't hold a line, you simply can't do this scheme in 72nd scale without using masking or some other procedure. So let's go. First color, RLM65. I'm going to be using my HPCH brush. Um, I do not actually use the MAC valve under the brush because uh, it's just too hard to get to. I actually use the MAC valve on the stem. Works better. Um, but I'm just going to put five drops of this paint in. Two, three, four, five. I keep my future in these little bottles. Very handy. One, two, three, four, five. Now the other thing Mission Models says you should never do is you should never mix your paint in the airbrush. I use these little uh, makeup brushes that I, I picked up many years ago anyway. I just keep reusing them and they, they just work great. Again, this is not recommended by Mission Models, but here we are doing it. Mixing the paint right there in the airbrush. 
<coughs> All right, let's paint. The paint goes on very smoothly. It's wet though, it's very wet. Help us out. This is a little hair dryer action, man. I don't know if it shows up in the camera or not, but the model's already got a nice glossy sheen to it. The future uh, levels perfectly, so it shrinks right down as soon as it's hit with the air, uh, air gun here. The hair dryer. Out of paint. I missed a little bit on this side, so I'm going to add a little bit more paint. One drop. And mix it up. The paint doesn't seem to be having any sort of reaction, bad reaction with the future. It just, it's almost like they were made for each other. Okay. So that's five drops of paint, six drops of paint gone. First part done. Now we clean the airbrush. Now here's where we're going to do things a little different. Mission model says use their thinner. Never ever use anything else. I'm using hardware store lacquer thinner. Just simple, cheap hardware store lacquer thinner. Cleaning out the, the brush. A little drop and we'll just spray it out into our spray pot. And we're ready for our next color. This time we're going to do the RLM 79. shake it up. One of the things I don't know if everybody knows, but I, I, I tend to paint my um, paint bottles white, the tops, and then uh, the first time I use the paint, I actually paint the color on it. And then on a Sharpie, I write the, uh, the paint number and the actual color, just so I can easily, more easily find them. I keep my paint in a drawer. This makes it much easier to find them. I'm just going to do six drops this time, just just in case we need a little more. I don't think we will, though. Okay, six drops of future. I do have to clean my stir brush. So we're definitely getting all kinds of contamination in here. We got lacquer thinner and all kinds of stuff going on. <clears throat> I'm not being very nice to this paint. I am not treating it like a supermodel.
I'll just tidy up a few little plays here and we'll move on to the next area. So let's start with uh, some green modeling. Okay, now I'm going to do something completely different. <clears throat> For uh, the green paint that I've added into this airbrush, I took uh, MMP three drops of this RLM 80 green. Um, I put uh, two drops of this clear gloss, this MMA 06 Mission Models gloss, and 12 drops of Mr. Color Leveling Thinner, um, the amazing wonder juice that is uh, probably one of the coolest things that I've ever run across in my life. Um, the effect it has on the paint is rather uh, spectacular. Now, I don't know why this works and how I ran into this is when I stripped the paint the first time I noticed that it liquefied um, in the presence of Mr. or in the presence of Tomei lacquer thinner. And liquefaction of the paint indicates that it's a lacquer paint and it's being thinned. I don't know that that's what it is, but anyway, on a hunch I tried some Mr. Leveling Thinner and uh, Wow, it works. Okay, so let's make some dots. So again, you can't you can't hide from the from this. If your brush or your paint can't handle it, um, you will not get a good result. Welcome back to my Mission Models test drive of the uh, Mission Models paint using uh, Future, mi mixing it with Future Flare Wax, um, also uh, using Mr. Leveling Thinner with it. Um, neither one of these uh, these uh, these products, Future or Mr. Leveling Thinner, are uh, probably recommended by Mission Models. Um, this is purely an experiment by me. Um, but as you can see, I've got my modeling completed. Um, and that is actually quite effective and uh, I feel is very realistic. I'm going to take some high resolution photos with my 100 millimeter macro lens so you can see just how good this work is and judge for yourself. I didn't do videos of it because it's kind of boring to watch people paint but I did, I did a, a stab at some uh, smoke rings off, off the cuff. I didn't really research the smoke rings, I just started drawing rings and had no trouble making them I think with some practice and uh, possibly even some fine tuning and maybe even using my infinity airbrush with the 0.15 tip I could make even better smoke rings um, I did some squiggles that you see in late war Luftwaffe stuff um, such as night fighters and uh, HE 219s and various planes very effective turned out really good um, I also just drew some general rings that you see on some weird 109 F camos um, that's that's another difficult thing to paint that, those didn't turn out that good, but I really didn't put a lot of effort into it either. But all in all, I would say Mission Models Paint, thinned with Future as a base coat, is a very, very viable thing. And one last test to do. Um, I'm going to do a little uh, sort of like masking, but not really mask. Um, but, you know, being the lazy guy that I am, I don't really have know where my tomato tape went. Um, all I seem to have is this Gorilla Tape. So we'll just take a piece of this Gorilla Tape and we'll just lay it on this model that I've, you know, been been handling without cleaning with alcohol or doing any of the recommended things. And I'm pushing that in nice and good. 
know if you can see that or not, but that's that's on there. And then we're just gonna take it off. No paint, peel up, none. None. Not a single piece of paint is peeling up. Okay, so why future? Future makes mission models paint perform superior. It, it actually performs better than, than it does if you use the mission models products. These things, which are all very expensive, by the way. Um, you know, it just does. I mean, I mean this is just my opinion, obviously. And I'm not, not going to state that this is an unequivocal fact, but, but it, it, in my opinion, it just performs so much better. Um, the adhesion issue seems to be the big deal with Mission Models Paint, and you have to follow their highly intricate process in order to not have adhesion issues. Well, I didn't follow any intricate process. I used half half a mixture of Future, and and that's it. You know, about the only thing I really didn't do in this video was eat Cheetos while I was building the model, and I guess I could do that for another one if you guys would, you know, just aren't convinced that this is a good idea. Um, if you're an aircraft modeler, though, actually, if you're any kind of modeler who wants to have a high quality performing uh, um, version of, of this uh, mission models paint it's really quite simple you know you just you just need to use future and uh, mr. Lovick thinner um, in my experience you will have superior results to the mission models products that you see here um, I'm I don't know why I'm not a chemist I can't say that uh, I, I honestly could prove this um, other than through experience, but I suspect that any of you who are experienced with airbrushes and um, you know model like I do, and uh, and I know many of you do, that you you will see similar results. There's no reason you wouldn't. Um, so uh, give it a shot. You know, feel free to report what you find. And if you learn something new, please let us know because as a modeling community, we move forward when we share information. Being shouted down by people being called an idiot, you know, telling, you know, questioning your motives. My only motive for doing this is simply to share experience. I get nothing from this. I get no money from this. What I do get though is a really, really tight paint job that's badass. That is worth sharing. And that's why I share this stuff. So um, anyway, that's my summary on Mission Models Paint and that's my thoughts. And so if you see me posting about adding future to Mission Models paint, that's why. Anyway, thanks for watching.